Hey folks. Hey folks. <laughs> Leave it here once again. Sorry about that. I, I got water right here a little bit on me, so yeah. Well, my saw was shut again for this video. Uh, hey guys. Hope everyone's doing well there today. Hope everyone's having a good day out there so far. Yeah. Uh, today, I hope y'all. Well, yesterday. Oh, I got caught. Yesterday, I hope y'all enjoyed my review of Patch Adams, which is still up on my channel. And next time, for my next World Movies review, continue paying tribute movie, continue paying tribute to him. I've got two more, more two more World Movies movies I'm reviewing right now. Just uh, this one today, and the other one tomorrow, and then I'll be done with Robin Williams. Just not for good, just for now. But anyway, today I'm reviewing an underrated movie he did. I would say underrated. Um, I never knew about this movie, and that is a movie called. It is the 1999 war comedy drama film, Jacob the Liar, that I'm going to review today. Shit, there it is. Yeah, Jacob the Liar, right here. Jacob the Liar, yeah. There we go, yep. Jacob the Liar, yep, and the picture back here of Jacob. <coughs> um, I never knew about this movie. I never knew, I never knew it existed. Uh, I looked up on YouTube, there's, I don't think there's barely any movie reviews for this film, you know, for Jacob the Liar. There's no reviews on here on YouTube for it, I don't think. Maybe a little bit, but not very much. And I've never heard anybody talk about it. You know, a lot of people talk about Robin Williams movie films like Mrs. Doubtfire, Jumanji, Jack, Flubber, which Change my Colin Patch out. I think everybody really knows those movies. Or Muscle and Hudson or Dead Poe Society or Good Morning Vietnam, but I've never heard anybody mention this movie until a friend of mine on YouTube here, uh, his name was Paul. Uh, Paul, he goes by Paul Reviews, but sadly, uh, I think he quit YouTube, I'm not sure. I hope he's doing well. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but he commented on my videos like a long time ago, like maybe three years ago or four years ago so far. Yeah, but he's commented on some of my older videos, including some of my James Bond reviews. Uh, sorry, my doctor. No, he didn't comment. Commented, he didn't comment on all of them, but he was watching them. But yeah, and we didn't have our disagreements on movies, but I always respected his opinion because we were always different. But we were always cool. But I definitely miss him. He, uh, I think he decided to quit YouTube. I think he lost interest. I remember him saying that to me that he lost interest on YouTube, and that sucks. I hope he comes back one day because you know he helped me get to know about this movie. He told me that this movie that he liked it and that it was a very underrated movie. It's the most powerful movie. Moving film experience this year, which I agree it is. It's a really great. It was a really good movie. Um, yeah. Like I said, it came out in 1999, and uh, but I'm glad Paul talked to me about this movie. I just saw these two films along with Muscle and Hudson, which I did a review. That's on my channel. Uh, I got these films for like five dollars at uh, Targets, and I was like, it was after Robin Williams passed away, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna get them so I can save them up for a review, and I plan to save them up for. Reviews which are already must one Hudson and now I'm reviewing Jacob the Liar, so yeah. Anyway, let's get into how the film got made. And remember, uh guys, um, I watched this movie for the first time. Not today, I'm talking about the first time when I got it on DVD, I watched it for the first time. This is my second time viewing this movie, second time watching it in order to prepare for this review. So if I mess up on some stuff, don't get mad at me. I even reviewed Toys and Toys was the first time I ever saw that movie. <laughs> yeah. But don't get mad at me and say, you missed this, you missed that. Hey, I'm trying my best here. This is my second time seeing this movie. I didn't grow up with this movie like I did with Jumanji or Mrs. Doubtfire or I saw Jack in middle school. Yeah, there's a lot of other Robin Williams movies I, I watched a lot before I even saw this. So I didn't grow up with this movie. I never grew up with toys. <laughs> when I reviewed that movie, it was my first time seeing it, but let's just clarify that. So... The film is directed by Peter Gustav and is produced by Marcy Garcia Williams and written by Coscut and Dieter Deacon. I can't say the names right. This film is based on the book of the same, night, same name by Joe Berwick. He's the man that wrote the book, I guess, of Jacob the Liar. His most famous novel is Jacob the Liar, even though it's spelled with a C in Jacob. In this movie, the title of Jacob, though, is a K, which is alright with me. Whatever, it don't matter to me. Which has been made to two films. He lived in Lavos during World War II for about two years and survived the Holocaust. Now that's interesting. Now 
In the 1960s, he wrote film scripts of Mars Witch, Jacob, Dear Short, Jacob the Liar, I can't say that right, Jacob, into a turn off, and the film production was halted. It made to a film by Eastern German film company DFA in 1974 and 1978, and there was a 1999 remake, the same 98, but it was 1999, Wikipedia, that starred Robin Williams, and it's had a limited success. Yeah. Says that he, like I said, grew up in the Holocaust, or survived the Holocaust, excuse me, during World War II, so I'm like, well, Sunday, I guess 1937, he was born, I'm not sure. But he sadly passed away due to colon cancer, you know, in 1995, so, you know. But if you want to read more about him, he's on Wikipedia, I'm sure, so they will look him up. Let's talk about the book. Book of the same name. Which this is a book that it's based on. Jacob the Lion was first translated to English by Melvin Coven in 1975. It follows the life of Jewish protagonist Jacob Hemne in the ghetto of London, Poland in 1944 during the German occupation of World War II. I think this is all 1944, the movie takes place. I'm guessing the book might be a little different. They do have the little girl named Lena in here and some of his friends in the movie. The novel has two endings. Jacob is killed by attempting to escape from the ghetto. Immediately after Jacob's death is shot is opening up the battle for the city. The Russians arrive to liberate them all. But Jacob was trying to escape to save himself and abandon his people to their fate or to get first hand. The true ending. Kosky hangs him shortly after Jacob's confession about the radio. I think that's his barber, which he hangs himself in this movie. And but the ending is different from the novel. So I believe the film is a remake, that's what they're saying. Of the film called Ch Jacob the Liar, Jacob the Train, it's in Jacob the Liar, or Jacob the Lynch, I can't say it right, I don't speak German, sue me. <laughs> it's based on the novel of the same name. This is a film that came out, I believe, in 1975, I've never seen it. I don't think it was ever released in America, just Germany. But I've never seen this movie. Yeah. But that's Jacob the Lurch, or Jacob the Liar, the original. But in German I can't really speak it, but maybe I'll write it down in the description down below. Cast of the movie, Rob Williams is Jacob Ham. I think he did this movie right after he did Patch Adams. Alan Arkin as Frank Furtor. Uh, Alan Arkin is a great actor. He's been in plenty of movies. Excuse me. He's been in plenty of movies. He's one of my favorite actors. I know he was in Edward Scissorhands. Uh, you, you, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. He was in. He played Inspector Kuzlow, Kuzlow, the heart of Lonely Hunter. But I remember him in that where Scissorhands is the dad, and you know, Little Murders, Catch 22. The Last Unicorn, Edward Scissorhands, like I said. He was in The Rocketeer, where he's PV, you know, the one that helped uh, build the rocket in that movie. Mark I like that movie. Uh, Indian Summer, The Jerky Boys, The Movie, North, Picture Windows, American Sweethearts, of course this film, Jacob the Liar, Little Miss Sunshine, Firewall, I think that was with, in the Santa Claus 3, The Muffets movie, I guess, and he was in the remake of Dumbo, 
Stand up guys, the incredible Mr. Bert Ridstone. Grudge match. I think he plays Stallone's like uh, trainer in that movie, but that's on the start to my opinion. Yeah, but that Larkin's another great actor. Bob Allen as Tolski. Maybe I've seen him guy in some movies, I don't know. Oh, he was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Steven Spielberg movie uh, starring Richard Dreyfuss. Oh, he was in Kiss Ring 2 as well. Hmm. Whose life is it anyway? He was in City Slickers 2. Let me see, was he in the first one? I guess not. Oh, he was in The Majestic. The Search and Cure License to Red, I believe, which is another Bob Myers movie, but he was uncredited. Lee Schreiber as Misha, as Misha, uh, Rob Williams' friend in the movie. Uh, of course, you know him from some movies. Uh, Lee Schreiber is another great actor. Of course, he was in the Scream movies. You know, Scream. I just think Scream One, Scream Two, and Scream Three because I think his character at the beginning of Scream Three, th uh, uh, Scream Three gets killed. Well, he was in Mixed Nuts. I believe that was with uh, Steve Martin. And of course, he was Scream as Cotton Weary. And Scream 2 and Phantoms. Twilight, the 1998 film that, that one starring Kristen Stewart and the other guy, whatever. He was next man versus he was next man versus Wolverine as Victor Creed, seventy, which I like that movie. Yes, I like X Men vs Wolverine. Sue me. They did scrub Deadpool in that movie, but anyway, that's not about that, but I do like Ace Manor's Wolverine, but that's just my opinion. Defiance, I think this was Daniel Craig. Repo Man, Movie 43, which I heard was, yeah, I don't want to see Movie 43, I never watched that film. Uh, he was in Spotlight with uh, Michael Keaton, Rachel McAdams, and uh, I believe Mark Buffalo, yeah. And Stanley Tushy, so yeah. That was Spotlight, was a good movie, I'm going to read that, and he was in Creed. Yeah, he, vo well, he voiced uh, Kingpin and Wilson Fisk, Kingpin. He voiced Kingpin in Spider-Man the Spider-Verse last year. I love that movie. Army Molestar as Dr. Cushman. He's been in the movie since the 50s. I, he's done a lot of films, but... Uh, not that I've seen him in. Mission to Mars, I think that story fell kill Mark he was in that. Never seen that movie. He's in a lot of movies. Hannah Taylor Gordon, Gordon as Lena, the one that Jacob takes, the girl that Jacob takes care of in the movie. Oh, she was in Jack, Sh Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, which came out in 2014. I don't remember that movie. <laughs> uh, nothing else I've seen around, so. Mark, Mark, Mark Margalis as Fingel? Let me see. He was in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. He was in Scarface with Al Pacino, The Cotton Club. I think a Francis Corsese movie. Delta Force 2 with Shark Norris. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh yeah, I remember him. He was, uh, let me see, Ace Ventura, Mr. Mr. Shaggy Dance. Yeah, you remember, uh, Mr. Yeah, I mean, well, you remember Ace Ventura's landlord in that movie? If y'all seen Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, you know, he's like this. Ventura! Yes, Satan? Oh, Mr. Shaggy Dance. I didn't know what you, I thought, I thought you were somewhere else. I'm sorry. <laughs> Loser! <laughs> if you remember that scene. <laughs> Like, there's no animals in here, I promise. Uh, he was in Horror Bowl. I believe that starred Keanu Reeves. No, what, the 2014 film? A Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. But I just remember the guy in Ace Ventura Pet Detective as uh, Ace, Ace's Ace. Ace. Ew! I don't know what I'm saying. As Ace Ventura's landlord. Right? That's what I remember him as. <laughs> yeah. Michael Jitter is Evan. Michael Jitter, again, he was in. He went, he wasn't Patch Adams, remember he played Rudy? You know, he didn't like the squirrels. 
afraid that they were going to bite his nuts off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was in Pain on Cash. He was in Jurassic Park 3, Airbud, where he played the main villain, the guy that abused the dog. And he sadly passed away, too. Uh, he passed away in 2003 at the age of 51. He was a really good actor. 2003? And that means the last movie's for Jurassic Park 3. He was a mouse hunt. The Grand Mile. I think that's with Tom Hanks. Uh, since his last film, I think it was Welcome to Collinwood Over Angel. I think his last film was The Polar Express. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. And uh, the CGI animated film. Also, Tom Hanks is the, the main character of that movie, I guess. Yeah. But I basically remember him in Air Bud and Jurassic Park 3. And now Patch Adams, basically. But he's, an, he's another good actor. May he rest in peace. The movie was directed by Peter Grosny. Uh, I guess he directed other Jewish films or films outside the United States. Uh, only one American I see is true. I haven't seen any of his other work. Produced by Stephen Hook, Marsha Grace Williams. Oh, this. Oh, Marsha. This film was also produced by. Uh, yeah, this is Marsha right here. That was Rob Williams' wife at the time. If y'all remember, he married Marsha. The long story of, uh, she was a nanny, and Robin was having an affair with her, and eventually she got pregnant, and they got married. I think their marriage didn't last too long. Oh, other films she produced, Mrs. Doubtfire, Patch Adams, Jacob Lawyer, so, well, the other two films, I guess I forgot to say, she produced Patch Adams and Mrs. Doubtfire. With her husband Rob Williams at the time, so yeah, I knew I knew her name. Well, yeah, that's the nanny <laughs> Rob Williams married in his, in his lifetime. Game played by Peter Gushy, the other big con. It's based on Jane of the Liar by Jewel Perrot. The music is by Edward Schindler, which I don't think I've ever heard of him. Oh, he did the music for Blue Shirt, which is a probably my favorite Marlon Lawrence movie. Love that film. Johnny English, starring Will Atkinson. Nine Lives, 2005 film, epic movie, yeah, oh gosh. Passengers, the 2008 film. The Polar Bears, yeah. The only one I know is Blue Street. Cool Intentions, uh, Species 2, which I've seen. Uh, yeah. Just Species 2, Species 2 and Blue Street. Yeah. Which, uh, starred Michael Madison, Michael Madison and Natasha Hendricks. Yeah. He did the musical for those movies. The cinematography is about Elmer Brigney. It's edited by Claire Simpson. Production company is Blue Wolf Productions Case of Ink. It's distributed by Columbia Pictures. It was released September 24th, 1999. It's 120 minutes long. The budget to make this film was $45 million. The box office made $4,956,401,000 worldwide. So forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. It opened in 1,200 1, theaters and made in its opening weekend, weekend place eight at the box office. The response was negative, feeling as it was half good to Life is Beautiful, which I've never seen that movie, so I can't comment on that film. It's a film that came out in 1997, Italian comedy. I've never seen Life is Beautiful, so I can't comment on that. Roger uh, gave it two stars and said that I guess he didn't like it. He liked uh, Beautiful Lie better, which I can't say that because I've never seen that movie. He said, Williams is a talented performer who's mo who moves on the right roles but has weaknesses for the strong ones. The screenplay and direction as well as the characters march in the over and, over and often overacted roles for a friend. Hey, Mom, I'm doing a movie review. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit. Uh, you want one or not? Yeah.
Hey folks, the same here, my mom. My room over here. Okay. Um, I have to disagree with a lot of people saying they're overacting. I don't think they're overacting in the movie, and I have to disagree. I don't think Rob Williams put the picks in the Wiggies ones. I wouldn't say that because he will. He won a go. You know, he won an award for playing Sean McGuire in Good One Hunting, so he won an Academy Award for that, and he wasn't supposed to win another one. Stupid, he never did, which is sad. Should have won more Academy Awards. He probably has. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I didn't disagree with Roger Ebert. I thought Williams did a great job. And the other actors I thought did a great job as well. I don't think they were overacting, but that's just my opinion. Covered all the basics. Okay. As I try to do in my reviews. <laughs> Okay, pretty much what Jacob the Liar is about, the story of the film. The film was set in 1944 in ghetto in German occupied Poland during the Holocaust and tells the story of a post Jewish shoekeeper named Jacob Herman Heyman who attempts to raise the, the moral hope inside the ghetto by telling rumors that he has been listening to a radio. But eventually, by doing this, everybody believes him and he keeps this lie going just to protect them, basically. To say that the freedom is coming, but even though he doesn't have a radio, he does not have a radio, and pretty much the Germans, who I guess at the time, this was also takes place around Hitler's time, you remember the Jewish were slaves, they had these camps around, and they tortured people, yeah, Hitler was a madman, you know, I think we all know that, <laughs> but he killed millions of Jews, and uh, they were like slaves, that's what I describe it, I mean, hey, that's the way I saw it in this movie, that they were, they were Jewish were slaves, you know. I felt bad, I still feel bad for them they had to go through that. Anybody who has to go through slavery, that, that probably sucks. I just don't, I, I've never been through that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to. Basically, he just wants to keep their hope, their hope alive, you know, that's why he's lying. But then, like I said, the Germans learn of this radio because they had, they say they have informants, and pretty much, they search for the hero who dares to operate it, who's there using it. The Germans want to find him, find who's ever done the way, saying that they have a radio, and basically stop them, saying that this is false, you know. Yeah. But that's the plot of the movie in a nutshell for you. Now, I'm going to try to say as much as I can of the plot of this movie. And it's two hour, 120 minute running time. I'll try. This is my second time viewing the movie, so just please be a little patient with me, guys, and don't get angry at me down in the comments below if I miss something. I'm going to try to tell the story, tell the plot of the movie the best way I can, so. Yeah, so I've the movie itself, but maybe I'll read a little bit of quotes from it. Well, pretty much the movie opens with Jacob Dwyer talking about Hitler. He's basically narrating or monologuing in the movie. He was a Polish Jewish shoot shopkeeper, and he also made pancakes for a living in the movie. I like the beginning that he's talking about looking at that wall, like it's a wall where they can't go past. It's basically like almost across the wall of freedom, but they can't go there. Uh, Jacob is chasing this newspaper. We have the opening credits we just need to listen to. Uh, there's this little girl named in the movie named Lena, who her parents, you know, want her free, want her to be free and not go to these camps, so they drop her off uh, at the train tracks. And Jacob is trying to run. He he ends up in this building. He's asking for a pass to get through the area, and the guy doesn't want to let him do that, and they won't even help him out. Pretty much, you know, uh, the rules are in this fuel camp, in this camp that you can't be, you can't, that they have a curfew which you have to be in your house to sleep. If you're not in your house to sleep, you're out and about, they'll kill you. So anything you do, or even try to run out of there, or try to escape, they shoot them, you know. And Jacob has a guilt, it's like prison lights almost, you know, where they see somebody trying to escape at night, and, and he meets Lena, and Lena, 
Look at this little girl's name. Basically he knows that she won't survive out there on her own, so he takes her to safety. Takes her to safety again. He does hear over the radio park, as I forget to mention about Soviet offenses, you know, that the Russians are coming to save them. He tells his friend who was Lee Schreiber in the movie, tells him about it. Lee Schreiber, of course, goes runs around his mouth about it. Even to his barber, and the barber tells everybody, so they all tell him what's going to happen, and they're all asking in the movie. Throughout the movie, they're asking him, you know, where's this radio, Jacob? Where's this radio? You know, because they want to know. Everybody wants to know that if he's telling the truth. He even just so Lee Schreiber commits him, he's like, I don't have a radio. Um, so one day, you know, basically tell him that there's a radio that, uh, one of them, one of the Jews will run up to the train, like he's almost trying to escape, he's trying to tell him, you know, we got a radio, we got a radio, and then he gets sadly shot, that was a very sad scene, he get, they, they shoot him. But Jacob decides to spread hope, just to give them hope, you know, the best way he can, even though he's lying. <laughs> he tells one guy he's lying, and then the guy commits suicide, which is sad, and he decides to continue on with his lie, but give them hope that they will be free, you know, someday, that this freedom will be coming one day, you know, for them. They say that he has a radio, a secret radio, where he keeps... We know the little girl he keeps in his house. Basically to keep her safe because if somebody knew that he was hiding her, that he would be, that he would be, he would be killed or she would be, you know, captured by the Germans. So he's trying to protect her throughout the movie, giving her a home because he knows that she can't go out, be out there, she'll die. Um, yeah. And everybody's like, do you have a radio? Do you have a radio? Um, everybody asks him, keeps on asking him about that. And again, he says yes. Alan Arkin is this guy that, uh, you know, is one of the Jewish workers, and Lee Schreiber asks his, to marry his daughter, which he does. He gives him a gun later on in the movie, and he also, Alan Arkin, um, <laughs> they sneak in this at the Michael Jitter. Uh, they, play Jew, the Jew, they play Jews as well. They sneak up into jail just to look for that radio. They basically try to get rid of the radio because they're going to kill you if you don't. If you have a radio, the Germans know about it, they find it, they'll kill you, you know. Again, like they're slaves, if you do anything wrong or don't go by the rules, they'll kill you, you know. They won't hesitate just to shoot you, you know. Yeah. Throughout the movie they're working, I think he's trying to hide in the bathroom to find out some information about the radio, or more lies he can tell. And there's this Jewish guy that goes to the bathroom, he has the papers like this, oh, 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 you know, I'm like, I'm using the bathroom, he's like, I'm sorry. And then he can't get out of there because this Jew, this German leader will see him. And again, they come to work, they have like whistles, and they do this. I'm serious, this is what they do, they're like, almost like a running pack, just to make them work, and if they don't work, they beat them to death if they don't or even kill them if they don't work so they're forced to do all this work they don't even get paid slaves <laughs> pretty much but that was the time of Hitler I guess and Jews were his slaves at this at this it's just a, it's just a time period this movie takes place so I don't take anything offensively in this movie because again it takes place in that time there's even in this movie they do say hell Hitler the Germans do so don't take anything in the wrong way in this movie it's just the time <laughs> that this movie is taking place around that time period. Uh, the Germans pretty much learned this radio. They try to hunt him down and uh, they even try to ask this professor who looks, you know, when he gets sick. Oh, I forgot to mention there's a scene that Robin Williams, you know, is playing music. I mean, he's pretending to be a radio, coughs, you know, by accident. Well, basically he tells her that his you know, that he made pancakes and other foods and stuff, but his wife told her that she was shot, you know, she was killed by the Germans, they shot her. I forget why, but it seems like he had a nice wife and he, you know, dearly misses her. And like I said, you know, there's a scene where Annalena also like have a dance, you know, which is fun, fun to watch, you know. This movie does have good humor as well, it doesn't take itself so seriously, it does have comedy in there, and it is fun to watch at the time. 
<laughs> Lee Sharp thought was pretty funny in this movie at the time. Yeah. When he goes to the professor, I like it. When Lee Sharp was like, da, 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 you know, dancing on the way downstairs. <laughs> Uh, eventually, though, they start coming down hard on his hard on the Jew. On the other Jews, going to kill them. They basically probably kill some Jews just to get to Jacob. And Jacob decides to say goodbye to everybody, Lena and his friends, including Lee Schreiber, tell them all goodbye, and that you know. So he and he goes to surrender to them, and he surrenders to the Jews. They want to know about this, so they beat him to death. They torture him. They pretty much like they put him on a like a wall or something, not like a wall, like a door, set up to the door, and put him over a bath of, of water to dry him to make him know he's, he's suffering, and they beat him up to death, and they said, you think, and Jim and Jim was like, how long do you think you can keep this up before the, the Americans, the Russians, the British come rescue you? You can mean that, we can just send you to a camp afterwards after you tell everybody, so they're going to force him to tell everybody the truth, everybody the truth, that... You know, and then when some people realize he doesn't have a radio, which Lena finds that out pretty quickly. And she helps kiss his lamp when Lee Sharper and uh, his girlfriend, uh, Marcus' wife, come to our rescue, but they're captured by the Germans. The Germans are going to send them all the away to the, to the camps, you know. But he tells them that he only listened to the radio inside his office when he snuck in the office of the game the film that he listened to the radio and that the Russians were coming. And so they say, okay, you will tell everybody the truth that there is no hope. Take that hope away. And uh, it's a very emotional scene, too, where they make... Where Jacob is, like, bloody beaten. You see him blood everywhere on his face. And he's... I say, okay, no, there is no freedom. There is no hope for you people. And the German commander is like, tell them now, you know. And Jacob just looks at them and looks at his store, looks at the birds, and he won't tell them. He won't. He decides not to tell them. He doesn't want to take that hope away. He he wanted to make a hero speech, basically, but as he refuses to tell them because. Even that words won't tell them because, you know, because he wants them to keep their hope and faith alive and he doesn't want to tell them that. He doesn't want to make them feel sad, you know. He would have told them the truth, but he would have made a huge speech out of it, in a way, for them. But he looks at the, I guess, German leader or whatever, and he just kind of, <laughs> like, smiles at him. Most of the time, the German guy just, just finally hands up, just gets pissed, pulls out his gun, and sh shoots Jacob. You know, basically just shoots him down dead. Which is very sad. And Lena's like, Jacob! You know, because they're all sad to see him go and just die there. Jacob says at the postmodern that all the, G the ghetto's residents were the ghetto's residents were then deported and were never seen again. As a novel. But there's no trouble made at all. Pretty much the Jewish prisoners that are taking them to the death camps, they're holding by Soviet troops, which is the Russians are showing up. So the Russians did really come, even if it's in the detail. Uh, I, I can't say, I guess the novel said Jacob tried to run away and escape, but no. If Jacob wanted to be a hero like he was in this movie, it, yeah, he wouldn't run like a coward. No, he stood up in front of everybody and decided not to tell them, just to keep their faith and hope alive. In doing so, he gave his life for that. So he didn't need to hear a speech at the end of the film, but at the end of the movie, the Russians come and basically save them, and Lena has an imagination of just being freedom, and I guess listen to, like, a opera music or, or music or something, fantasy she's having, which is a little weird, but I'm like, okay, it's went with it, and that's the ending of Jacob the Liar. Uh, yeah, not much I can say about it. It's going to be a short review, but that's the end of Jacob the Liar. I missed some things, but sue me. I tried my best to cover everything I could. Read some quotes from the movie. Hitler goes to a fortune teller and asks, When will I die? And the fortune teller replies, On a Jewish holiday. After then asks, How do you know that? And she replies, Any day you die will be a Jewish holiday. I believe we are the chosen people, but I wish the Almighty had chosen somebody else. 
Here's a book about Africa. You read this, you'll forget they're hungry. Jacob, there are thieves in your apartment. My apartment wants to steal. Tonight is Shepka. Great, real fast like every other night. Hunger for hope, maybe worse than hunger for food. Oh yeah, there's a scene where, you know, he tries to, she wants to look like she wants to cat, a cat. You know, stay away from the cat. Like, <laughs> there's a scene where Jacob's also chasing the cat away. That was funny. You know. And even Lee Shepard says, go out, chase after him. He's like, he's, he's out there in curfew. <laughs> what happened to your wife? They shot her under a tree. I don't know what country it was. I didn't bother to ask. Oh God, of the Jews. Why didn't you make your people a race of mice? I don't want to see you playing with a cat. I certainly don't want to see you catch a needed. Any cat that this is him he caught is sick. I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. A barber with a dual razor like a blind mose. But when the, uh, pretty much when the, he does tell his barber the truth, and the barber's upset about it, and pretty much hangs himself, that he has nothing against Jacob, and he respects him for it, but he doesn't want to go to these death camps, and pretty much hangs himself, you know. If you had one and didn't want anyone to know, the best way you could be to say is you had one. Because no one owning a radio will be stupid enough to admit it. They leave me alone, which means, what does it mean, Jacob? I don't know. It means you got a radio. I don't have a. I don't have a radio. I understand. Stop torturing me. The Germans are already doing a fine job. Clearly they're retreating, but generally they're advancing. My name is Jacob Heim. But Jacob Heim, I imagine you much taller. So, so did I. You're hiding someone. Yes. Why well, couldn't you think it is quick in the ring? Does that mean it's nearly over? That's a very good question. He heard me. We remind listeners not to ask questions as interference with deception, and please don't look at the radio. But maybe it wasn't like that at all, because you know that Frigator says, until the last line has spoken, the curtain cannot come down. Mishka, about 50 kilometers out of town, the train was stopped by Russian troops who had just taken Bozent and Brett. Alright. Well, hopefully I covered enough for the movie, but that's the thing, that's, David Lyle, that's the best way I can review this movie. I'm sorry it's not very long, but I'll keep this one short and sweet, I guess, and, uh, keep my final opinion on the film. I, I did my best. That's all I can do here on my channel sometimes. Especially if it's my first time seeing a movie or a second time, or a movie, you know, I haven't really grown up with. You know, and Jacob Lyle wasn't one of them. I didn't even know this movie exists, like I said, until my friend Paul told me about it, so on YouTube a couple years ago. I didn't even know it exists. <laughs> but, Jake Valaya, God damn it. <sighs> but Jake Valaya, really good movie. Great film. I really like the story of the movie. The movie had guts to tell the story for the time, you know. It does, I think, stay true to that book. And I had to disagree with the critics, and I'm, like, well, I'm, I'm sure it's got a little rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's why I think of them all the time, yeah. But Jay Wire, very underrated movie. The acting is good, I thought the story was good. I like that it takes place around 1944. Uh, the movie had Gus to take that place around the time, and it was a good movie. The acting was good, I like the story of that one man, Jacob, even though he's a liar. He does it to give hope and, you know, hope and faith, I think. You know, that's what he tries to do, I think. He tries to give people faith. Basically doing that, you know, the Jews can be free. And I think at the end of the movie, even though he didn't give a hero speech, I think he was a true hero because he didn't, he refused to lie to them and, and take their hope. He didn't want to take their hope away. He didn't want to take their faith away. He knew that, I think Jacob knew at the end of the film he couldn't do that. That he had to keep that lie going to... In a way, it was the truth because I think he really heard that the Russians were coming at the end of the movie. And guess what? He was right. They came. So in a way, he's still a hero. He didn't need to make a speech. He still was at the hero. He saves his he saves his people. And I thought that was a very good story, you know. So he lied for a very good reason. He had a very good reason for lying. He did it to keep their faith up, their hopes up. So he had a good reason. Because again, like I said, the Jewish, you know, this is the time when Hitler took place. Again, they had no freedom. They were like slaves. They were working, but they couldn't get paid if they didn't work. Or they would, you know, there's a scene where the barber does a dance to distract, you know, Jacob trying to get out of the bathroom and he gets beaten up. 
or some of them if they try to escape, they get shot. You see that a bit in his in this movie where they get shot or if they're out of curfew, they get beaten. Jacob nearly gets shot when he tells them, hey, I'm the one that has the radio. They were nearly close to shooting him even though I don't believe him at first though, but you can't really go across, it's like a line, you can't go across the German line because if you do, they'll shoot you or at least beat you or torture you. Yeah, if you break any of the rules, you know, they'll kill you. But at the end of the movie, I do think they got their freedom. But I think Hitler back in the day really did do this to Jews, you know. And it was during the Holocaust, which the writer himself went through. So I guess he was around the time Hitler was around, you know. And Hitler was a, like I said, a madman. So, and this film had guess to tell this story. And I thought the story was very good. The acting by everybody is good. Rob Williams, great performance. Lee Schreibner and Alan Arkin, all great job in my opinion. I don't think they were right acting. I disagree with Roger Ebert, I'm sorry. I thought their acting was great. Williams, in my opinion, always picked the right roles. And I think he had, at least he had the balls to play Jewish. You know, even in this movie, Muscle and Hudson, which I like, I like Jake a lot better than Muscle and Hudson, but Muscle and Hudson here, he's playing a Russian that wants to be, have freedom. So, I think it's two movies that deal with freedom, but in a different way. Different type of movies, you know. You know, when he's playing KGB, when he's playing Rindler Ivanov, who, who just wants to defect and be free, and Jake Valar, who was trying to free his people, you know. Even though he's lying about the radio and saying that the, the Russians are coming to save them, to free them, basically. So in a way, both movies are about freedom, but I think Jake Valar just does it a better way, especially with the time period it's supposed to take place in. And, I, again, I disagree with Roger Ebert. I thought Robin Williams did a great job. And this film didn't do very well with Boss of Us, it seemed like it did flop, and it's a shame, you know, it didn't make it, didn't seem like it made his budget back, you know, which is sad, you know, but I guess people at the time maybe weren't ready for this type of movie. Maybe the timing was bad or something like that after Patch Adams, I don't think a lot of people like that, so maybe they were a little upset with that movie, maybe they just didn't want to see this movie, maybe they just didn't have injuries back then, I don't know. Um, but I think after this, Robin Williams would go to play like serial killer characters like uh, Insomnia or One Hour Photo or Death is Mushy. He's playing more darker characters and Rob Williams did a great job in that. You know, which I reviewed One Hour Photo and Death is Mushy, but, I've never, but I haven't read Insomnia, but one day I will. But anyway, uh, The Music Score by Edward Schumer is really good. It's like a kind of like a Jewish, a Jewish theme a little bit. You know, and it's very good to listen to. I can listen to it, and I just know it's Jacob the Liar. Uh, Peter Koshny did a great job directing the film. Uh, the screenplay by Peter Koshny and Dieter Deacon. Okay. He's a French screenwriter, so I maybe made French films, which I've never seen any of them. Sorry. But, anyway. Yeah. Good directing. You know. Great story, I thought. I had a really great story. Good cast. The cast. The little girl, Lena, that played Lena, she did a great job. And, the, and Alan Arkin, Lee Schreiber, Michael Jitter, all of them did a fantastic job in this movie with their roles. They weren't overacting. They played... I really brought them as Jewish people. They really acted. They really did a great job with their acting. Because again, Robin Williams, I can't say he's a bad... Robin Williams, to me, was always a great actor. Never a bad one, because first of all, he, I think, before he won the Academy Award, or Golden Globe, if you want to call it, I don't really care much about the Oscars, but I don't need an Oscar to tell me that he was a great actor anyway, but that's just me. But even though he went for Good Will Hunting, he was set up for other movies as well. And the reason he kept continuing making movies after this and before this film, you know, like Moscow Hudson and Depot Society, is because Depot Society, and especially if I mentioned him in Vietnam, sorry, is because he's a great actor. He can balance drama and being funny. And Robin Williams, his film is a, has comedy in it, but it's also a bit of a drama. Robin Williams did a great job. He can always, he proves in a lot of his movies, he can be dramatic. And that's what made him a great actor. He can always make you feel sad. He can always pull a character off pretty well, in my opinion. You know. You know, even as a Doubtfire had a drama in it. And, you know, that was a movie with a good heart to it. And so was this movie. 
a good story and a good cast. Uh, um, minor issues, well, uh, the film does drag a bit in areas for me. I did drag the pacing, I thought, dragged a little bit in some scenes. It, I thought the pacing dragged in a few scenes, but that's just my opinion. The pacing was an issue for me. The film, you know, I think the pace could have been picked up a little more, a little better in the film. For its running time, though, I know they had to go this way, but I did have an issue with the pacing a little bit. I just felt it dragged in some scenes. But that's just my opinion. That's just my one flaw with it. But in that, everything else about the movie is great. The humor definitely works in the film. The music score, the cast, the story, all great in my opinion. And the director, the writers, producers, Marshall did a great job producing this movie. Uh, yeah, everybody did a good job making this film. And this is a very underrated movie. That in my opinion, this film is definitely one of Rob Williams' best films. Yeah, Jay, well, I'll say it. One of his best films and one of the most underrated, like uh, Jack or Jack and uh, Patch Adams, which I think are underrated films, like this one, Jay Blair. Underrated movie. I don't get the hate for it. I think it deserved to be. I don't think the critics got the movie at the time, or maybe they just didn't care for it or they saw the original. I've never seen the original, so I can't say that's better. I, I don't know. If you've seen the original, you probably like it better. That's cool, but I can't say that because I've never seen the 19, 1975 original film. So what can I say? But anyway, guys, all I can say is, Jake Miller, really good film. Definitely check it out. If you're a fan of Robin Williams, you miss him like I do. And I know tomorrow is going to be the, the day of the fifth year of his death, of his passing. Yeah. But Jake Miller, my rating for this film is I'm going to give this film... Four to five stars. Definitely one of my favorite Ron Williams movies, and definitely one of his most underrated films, and one of his most underrated performances. I think that a film that gets overlooked and it shouldn't be, in my opinion. But Jamie Wilder, I will give. Uh, I'll give Jacob Wilder a thumbs up, and my rating for this film is four to five stars. Yes, four to five stars for Jacob the Liar. So definitely check it out. Good movie. If you want to know my thoughts on Muscle and Hudson, just go back to watch that review if you want to know my opinion on that film. Anyway, guys, my next Robin Williams film, I believe this came right after. Okay. And, okay, um. Okay, and tomorrow, guys, I'll be reviewing my last Robin Williams movie. Review perfect timing too, since tomorrow is the day, the fifth anniversary of his death, and what a perfect time for me to pay tribute to him by doing these reviews. And tomorrow, I'm going to review the, I guess, science fiction, drama, comedy, a little bit, whatever you want to call it, basically. And that is a film called another underrated movie where he plays a robot, and that is a film called Bicentennial Man. I think Bicentennial Man, yeah. Really good movie. Very underrated in my opinion. But I'm definitely going to be reading this film tomorrow. Uh, this one's a bit longer, 131 minutes. Well, I can get through it. Yeah. But by Centennial Man will be my next Robin Williams review. And that'll be tomorrow. And thanks guys for watching. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you seen Chicken Blur? Do you think it's underrated? And if you hate the movie, that's fine. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of Jacob Dwyer? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And I hope you look forward to my last Rob Williams review tomorrow. And that will be of Bicentennial Man. So, thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.